Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can check out all the patterns I have available and maybe get one for you to knit up for yourself. Also in the description below, you'll find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. We'd love to have you join us and come over so we can continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube channel and it has the bonus that we can share pictures. Today, I have a new pattern to talk to you about, which is part of a new collection, which I'm going to talk to you about, which features a uh, new to me stitch and possibly to you stitch called the Bunch Stitch. And because there are probably quite a few of you here who are just here to see the Bunch Stitch, first thing off, we're going to jump right into a little demo of how to do the Bunch Stitch. If you would like to hear more about the pattern and the collection, please continue after the tutorial. If not, enjoy this tutorial. The Bunch Stitch involves three stitches. The first of the three stitches, you insert your needle as if to knit and slip that stitch off without knitting it. You're just moving it from the left to the right. Then you insert your needle into the next two stitches as if you're gonna knit two together and knit those two stitches, but do not allow those two stitches to fall off of your needle. Yarn over and then insert into those two stitches again, bring that yarn through, and then allow those two stitches to drop off. Now we have, as you can see, four stitches, but since this is neither an increase or a decrease, we have to do something with this stitch. So use your left hand needle, insert it under that front leg, and pick this up and over, and there you go. That's it, we still only have three stitches, and that is the bunch stitch. So I'm gonna try it once with my right hand yarn management. Not that great at this. So insert your needle and slip that stitch off knitwise. Insert as if to knit two together. I have to drop it because me and the right hand don't get along well. Wrap that and pull it through, but do not allow those stitch it two stitches to come off your left hand needle. Yarn over and then insert as if you're knitting two together again. <laughs> you can see how bad I am at this. Wrap that. Ha! I missed it. <laughs> I told you I'm horrible at this. Bring that through. There we go. Now you have those three stitches. Again, you lift up your slip stitch, pass it forward, up, and off. There we go again. You've got your bunch stitch. I'm gonna do it one more time left-handed because I wanna prove to you guys I can knit. So, slip one knit-wise, knit two together, but don't let it drop off. Yarn over, knit two together. And the final step, pass that slip stitch up and over. And that's it. That's the bunch stitch. Now you know how easy the bunch stitch is to do. It is a really fun stitch that is not hard to do. It doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease, it just creates this really interesting little bunching of stitches. And I found it very intriguing, which is why when I received a call from Stitch Sprouts that they wanted some proposals for a their first ever collection of patterns in their yarn, I thought of the bunch stitch and sent in a proposal. 
Now, Stitch Sprouts. What is Stitch Sprouts, you might ask? Well, Stitch Sprouts is an independently owned company by the wonderful Heather Zuppetti. And they, um, they. <laughs> It's really just a her. It's Heather. She makes a catalog and does all kinds of awesome stuff. She represents actually a fairly substantial number of indie designers like myself as a way to get us into yarn stores. So if you have a yarn store that carries paper patterns and might want them to carry one of my paper patterns, then Stitch Sprouts is where you go, but Stitch Sprouts also has a lot of other interesting stuff. They have stitch markers and they have, um, they, I keep calling it they, it's really just her. She has, um, really cool new stitch markers and she's starting with buttons and just all kinds and kits and, and, uh, learn to knit programs. It's it, really cool. I'm going to put a link to Stitch Sprouts in the description below so you can check it out. But she also has two different yarn lines. Um, one is a bulky, which you have seen here before, and the other is a, a sport weight, which you have also seen here before. Uh, Yellowstone and Crater Lake, the yarns are beautiful. They come in really pretty colors that are inspired by the different national parks that they are named after. And she decided that she wanted to have some yarn support patterns for her yarn and I was like yay so I sent in a proposal uh, what a proposal is is I make a swatch I come up with a concept I make a swatch and I send it in and usually more than one and then Heather or the person who's made the call reviews all the different proposals that they receive and then makes a collection out of them and I was so excited to be included in the collection for Crater Lake, which is called Stitch Sprouts Volume 1 Side B. Stitch Sprouts Volume 1 Side A were the Yellowstone patterns, but I am in the Crater Lake patterns, and I can show you, uh, I had to send off the finished piece to be photographed, but I can show you my swatch <laughs> tiny shawl. So obviously I did a shawl and it is in two colors of Crater Lake. These are not the colors we ended up going with, but it is what I had to make my swatch with. So you can see it in two other colors and you can see the bunch stitch here. You can see how it makes a really interesting effect. And what is cool about it is because of the way it bunches, it I use the same concept as I did in Love Child in that what you're doing is playing with color dominance. When the bunch happens and you're doing the bunch stitch and it bunches all the one co color stitches together and then the others stay open, it makes this, the first color makes the blue color dominate. But then when you swap here and all the blue stitches are being bunched up and you get your gray stitches, your gray color dominates. So you're really just working the same stitch over and over again, but it goes back and forth with which color dominates. So it's an asymmetrically shaped shawl, starts up at this point, work in this direction. It is a lot of the uh, rows are simply stockinette rows, then with the bunch stitch. So it is actually super simple to work. And in this gorgeous uh, Crater Lake yarn, I did it on a fairly large needle. It drapes beautifully. The sample, which I will show you a picture of shortly, um, I did it with one skein of each. So it made a decent sized shawl but the way the pattern is written, if you want a larger shawl, you just need more yarn and you can make it bigger. But since it's bulky, it knits up like crazy fast and really it's so soft, you don't wanna stop. Okay, so now, what haven't I mentioned? I haven't mentioned the name of this pattern. And that is another thing about working with a third party or being in a collection is that you don't get to name the pattern most of the time. The pattern is named by the person doing the collection. So the whole thing holds together as a collection. And <laughs> this is gonna be fun because I can't even remotely pronounce it. It's Remugiant, Remugiant, uh, Remugiant. <laughs> 
apparently it is a word that means ringing, resounding, or reverberating, which makes sense because um, once I saw her, and it's a really cool name because the way that the colors move, it looks like something almost like pulsing, which I'm like, okay, that works great. And here is a picture of the shawl. You can see it all spread out and you can really see how it alternates between the light and the dark and you get that interplay of color dominance. And you can see here that Heather selected the monochromatic look, which the purple on purple, I think looks really super cool. So in my little swatch, you can see what two different colors looks like. And then you can see it monochromatic. The more contrast you have between the colors, the more it's gonna pop. And there are a lot of beautiful Crater Lake colors to choose from. You could do gray on gray, there are pinks and everything. So this is my new pattern, Remugiant is what I'm gonna say it's pronounced. <laughs> and it is available on Ravelry right now. You can check in the description below for a link to the pattern. But it is also available as part of the collection, the Stitch Sprouts Volume 1 Side B, which is a collection of, I believe, six patterns. Let me make sure before I say that. Yes, it's a collection of six patterns and Remugian is only one of them, here it is. But then we also have a bunch of other. The ebook itself, if you want all the patterns, is $18, which I think is, you know, for six patterns, really good. And I'm gonna work on this. So the first pattern, that the uh, next, you know, first is my shawl, but then we have this one, which is Euphony by Jennifer Dassau. And it is a top-down raglan turtleneck. You can see, um, I have it up on my screen over here, so as you see me looking away, it's got this really cool texture. It starts at the top, it's got the raglan shaping, so it changes. It's available in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sizes from 30 to 52 inch bust. So that's all the measurements. And then you have a sleek, body and then it picks up you can see at the bottom the texture again and this turtleneck can be worn either like standing up and so it's like slouchy or you can fold it over so there's two different looks it is a lovely sleek uh, pattern and since it's in the bulky yarn it's going to knit up fairly quickly but I really like how this looks and the choice of the stockinette and how sleek it is and it's it's not the sweater itself doesn't look bulky even though it's in bulky yarn it's not like a chunky it's a very sleek and elegant and i love the treatment on the raglan so that is euphony by jennifer dasau and then i asked heather if she named these specifically because she wanted to laugh at me to um when i try to pronounce them and she didn't say no <laughs> so this one is psithorism psithorism <laughs> no clue what i do know it is an absolutely beautiful squishy cow from mindy wilkes i said cowl not cow i know it sounded like cow but it's cowl and it is worked flat and it's got this chunk of really beautiful lace and then a chunk of super squishy garter and then you graft it together with a three needle bind off to make this beautiful long loop that you can either wear long or double looped around it is absolutely gorgeous um anything else three needle bind off i got it the finish size is 10 inches tall and 41 inches around so there you go it is beautiful and it looks like you could do it pretty much in any color you wanted to do the next pattern is sorry sorry i don't know I really think that she just did this to torment me. I'm pretty sure if we Google it, it has a wonderful meaning that makes total sense. <laughs> I decided not to Google it so I could pronounce them horribly just for fun. Uh, these are by Heather Zapetti, and they're a beautiful pair of mitts with a fun cable. It looks like a fully gusseted thumb. 
and they're beautiful and you can make the pair with one skein and since they are on size 10 needles these things are gonna knit up like super fast and they will keep you quick cozy this would definitely be if you are gift knitting bust out a couple of these and give them to everybody i really like the shape of the cables on the back of the hand and then there's a different cable offset so that's super fun i'm gonna go out on a limb and say this next next one is Tacenda. It doesn't look that bad. Again, by Heather Zapetti. And did I mention that in addition to her being an amazing entrepreneur and doing all this stuff, she's also an awesome designer? It doesn't seem fair. This is a lovely cabled hat. Um, you can see here in the picture that there's a cable, the, the one beautiful center cable with the zigzags and other cables. What you can't see is that the cable is right here and then the back of it is ribbing, um, but like almost rib like really wide panels of stockinette with channels. So it's just the one big panel of cables with a more plain back. So you can wear it off centered. I think it's got beautiful balance. And let me look and see if I can see that the, the decrease is like concentric circles so it is absolutely lovely and i really like this green color this again takes one skein of yarn on size 10 needles and you could do this and i think this would look really great with the mitts so one skein of each color and you are good to go then this is i think the biggest piece this is 2t i can pronounce this with no problem by bonnie sennett and it is a gorgeous rectangular wrap with all of this big squishy texture in it um, that you can just wrap up in. You can wear it as a stole because it's wide enough. Let me see if I can see the men measurements. It's 18 and three quarters inch wide by 78 inches long. Or you can wear it as like one of those really cool oversized scarves, which I think would be super cool. You could pretend you're Lenny Kravitz and be like, I'm so cool. <laughs> You've all seen that picture, right? But this one takes 880 yards. So it's a lot of yarn to make a big, old, beautifully squishy stole. I really like the different textures, especially the big diamond shapes. It looks like it would be a lot of fun to knit and keep your attention. So those, and of course, my shawl, Remugiant, 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 whatever it's called, is a, the only two color piece in the collection. And it's super fun. Um, I don't know if you can see in here, one of the things I really liked, and it was almost an accident, is at the end, you do that bunch stitch. And then I have you bind off on the wrong side row. And it gives it this effect of almost like a pico bind off, but it's just how the bind off is interacting with that bunch stitch. And I think it gives it a delicate little finish. So that is my new pattern, Remugian. Again, check in the description below for links to all of this stuff, including a link to Stitch Sprout so you can check things out. And if you need to come back to the beginning of the video and check out that instructional, the little tutorial on the bunch stitch, uh, come back as many times if you need it. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you think you might knit my shawl or one of these patterns. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.